Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight we're working on Module 5, Lesson Number 29, and tonight we are estimating sums and differences using benchmark numbers. And this is a really uh, under-taught part of mathematics, which is estimation. Um, you can use this in use this estimation in your life more than you use actual math much of the time. And even better than that, if you have a good estimation ability, you will easily be able to tell when you make a misstep in your actual math calculations because you'll come up with an answer that isn't, doesn't match what your estimation was and you'll know immediately that you must have done something wrong uh, in your calculations. So having this is like having a little extra checker on your shoulder who can help you out uh, when you go astray with your regular uh, math algorithms. So let's take a look at a few problems tonight that involve estimation. Let's take a look at problem number one. Problem number one asks us to estimate each sum or difference to the nearest half or whole number by rounding. Explain your estimate using words or a number line. And then the first problem we've got in 1a is 3 and 1 tenth plus 1 and 3 fourths. Well, let's see. So we're going to nearest half or whole number. So I'm going to say that 3 and 1 tenth is roughly 3, right? One-tenth, we know, is a very small fraction, so it's just a little bit over three. And let's take a look at one and three-fourths. One and three-fourths is about, it's pretty close to two. Because again, if we think of one and three-fourths, and we had three-fourths of a pizza, it would be most of a pizza. So we're going to say that that's about equal to two. So I'm just going to add those two numbers together. I'm going to say three plus two equals five roughly. So we've got our estimate. And no, notice that those squiggly, uh, the squiggly equal sign is your estimation sign, right? That 3 and 1 tenth plus 1 and 3 fourths is not exactly equal to 5, but we think that it's pretty equal to 5. Now that I think about it, we could have done a number line for this one too. And the book's number lines are really specific, right? Uh, they go, let's see, we'll just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six. We'll number it up this way. The book's number lines are very specific, but what I would look at in a number line if I were estimating is I would say, well, hey, let's look at that first number. One and three tenths. Well, that's somewhere right around here, right? It's just, just to the right of the three. And let's see, we added one and three fourths to that. So that's almost hopping up two full ones. So I would say, oh, there's one. Almost full is going to be somewhere in this range, right? Not too full. Too full would get us up just north of the five, but somewhere in this range. And that tells me the same story that I learned before, which is that once we've hopped from zero all the way up to a little over three, and once we've hopped from three up almost two more, we end up in a spot that is roughly five. And that's all we're looking for in an estimation problem. This is really helpful because if we needed to solve this problem exactly, we would go ahead and do all the mathematics to solve it exactly. But at the end, if we didn't get an answer that was pretty close to five, bells should go off in our head, and we will know that our estimation tells us that we've done something wrong with these precise mathematics. Something must be redone. Okay, let's take a look at another problem. Problem number two says, estimate each summer difference to the nearest half or whole number by rounding. Explain your estimate using words or a number line. Okay, well, let's take a look at our two uh, fractions here. We've got 16 thirds and we've got 17 eighths. So let's break that down. Let's see, 16 thirds. 16 thirds is the same as, well, let's see, how many thirds could we evenly divide in there? Let's see, Th three, six, nine, 12, 15. Let's see, that's, that sounds five times three thirds. That's gonna be five holes, plus then we'd have one more, plus one more third. So that's five and, that equals five and one third, which is basically equal to five. And let's take the other one, 17 eighths. Well, let's skip count and see how many holes we can get out of that. Let's see, we get 8, 16, that must be about it, right? So 2 holes, 8 eighths is another way of saying a hole, right? Plus, let's see, we've got one more eighth after that to get to 17. So that's 2 holes and 1 eighth. And that is, let's see, 2 and an eighth means 2 and just a tiny little sliver of pizza. So that's basically the same as 2. So now that this is an addition problem, I can say 5 plus 2, and that's, we're going to get our end answer, which is about 7, right? So that 16 thirds is about 5, and 17 eighths is about 2, and that will leave us an answer that is about 7. Sounds good? All right, let's take a look at one more. 
I'm going to hop over to number four. I'm going to say use benchmark numbers or mental math to estimate the summer difference. All right. Well, this time I don't even have to draw out the work as much as I did in the last one. I can just look at 10 and 3 fourths and say, okay, if I had 10 and 3 fourths pizza, that would be very close to having 11 pizzas, right? And I'm going to add on some number. Let's see, 12 and 11 twelfths. Well, if I had that, I would have almost 13 whole pizzas. And so that means that we're going to have, oh, let's see, I should have done the squiggly marks here, right? We're going to have roughly 11 plus 13, that must be 24. Our answer is going to be roughly 24 using mental math. All right, that should give you enough to go on for tonight's homework. Remember, estimation, a crucial part of mathematics. It develops your number sense, your numeracy, and it can really help get you out of a jam when your calculations have led you astray. Join me again next time on Mr. Kung Has Problems.